please put your hands together for Dr. Dolph Lundgren. Hi guys. Nice to be here. I had a little surgery in my ankle, so I'm a little limping a bit, but I got, uh, I, had to, I kicked somebody in the head on an Expendables 4. Look, what I should have seen him. Yeah. Definitely should have seen the other guy. Yeah, the other guy. Uh, what was his name? Stallone something? No. Yeah, uh, I don't no, know. No, we're on the same side. Just kidding. <laughs> so welcome, and thank you for spending the time with us. How yeah, are you enjoying the con? How are you enjoying this con? Very, very nice. I just got here. Uh, seems to be a lot of excited people, and very nice people. And there, there are a lot of collectors, a lot of cool items to sign. I've realized that. It's really nice. Thanks. <laughs> Very nice. Have you been to Pittsburgh before? Um, yeah, I think I was here for uh, publicity for, for a movie or a couple of movies. Nice place. Looks pretty good. Well, I, I don't know much about it, but uh, Steel City, I guess. <laughs> Bunch of tough guys. A lot of tall people here, which I like. Southern California, everybody's short, you know. <laughs> short and successful, short and rich. Well, you'll get a lot of advice on where to go to eat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna take some, take some names here later for uh, for food. Uh, Italian, maybe something. Must be some good Italian here, right? Yeah. And there's a sandwich shop, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And that Scottish place, McDonald's, uh, is really good. I, I eat there quite a bit myself. Um, we do have some people waiting for questions. I do have a quick question for sure. you. Um, before we get over to them, and I'm going to run over with the mic, but you've played some epic villains, some epic good guys as well. Who has been your inspirations who were epic good guys and bad guys, you know, that kind of inspired your performances? Oh, uh, okay. Um, you're right, yeah. I mean, I started out playing a villain, playing um, uh, in Rocky IV, playing Ivan Drago. <laughs> um, and... Um, you know, as a kid, I, my dad took me to see the, uh, Sean Connery and James Bond, and uh, I remember Kirk Douglas in um, Spartacus uh, when I was a kid. Um, and I used to watch Eastwood and, and Charles Bronson and t Tough Guys, you know. Um, so I guess some of the inspiration maybe for playing heroes came from them. And um, I think the villain, villainous roles, you know, I... I I enjoyed doing it, I think, because I had a lot of issues, you know, myself from my childhood, things I had to kind of express. And when you're a villain, you can, there are fewer rules you have to stick to. You can be a little crazy. You can do some uh, some uh, bad stuff and uh, get away with it on screen. Even if you die at the end, you can still have fun, you know. And I think, uh, I think that's kind of appealed to me. You know, I, I kind of got... It was a bit like therapy for me when I was younger. Um, so it's still, it's still attractive, but I, I don't mind. I mean, playing a, playing a lead or a good guy is, is also nice because usually it's a little more emotional in a different way, you know, a little more subtle. As a bad guy, you're, you're taking out the turns. You're being a little, it's more colorful. Um, so like, for instance, in Expendables 4, which is coming out in September, I play Gunnar Jensen, you know. And he's, he's not a bad guy, he's just nuts, you know. <laughs> Too much of everything, that guy is just, yeah. So um, I think, and that's fun, because you get to be a good guy, but you get to be kind of crazy, too. All right. All right, we have a question here. Hi, Dolph. I waited a long time to see you, um, you know, since Carl Weathers was here. Um, what was the audition process for Rocky IV, and then also how was the training between Rocky IV and Masters of the Universe for uh, for He Man? Okay, a good question. Well, uh, auditioning, I actually I went up for a role in uh, I lived in New York at the time. Uh, I was about 26 years old, and and I went up for a boxing movie, uh, Cattle Call. Hundreds of people, hundreds of guys lined up, and I came up to this table, and there's a woman sitting there. And she said, um, what's your name? And she said, how tall are you? And I said, 6'4". And she said, too tall, next. And I was like, uh, excuse me? And I looked behind her. There was a little handwritten sign, Rocky IV. And that's the first time I realized it was a Rocky movie. So I was a big Rocky fan. So I, um, I took some pictures of me in boxing gear. 
and um, because I was a fighter at the time, karate fighter. And then I, through my acting coach and through some friends, I managed to get the photos off to Stallone. And it was six months later or so, I heard from somebody from MGM, and then I had to, I went to LA and I met him. I was starstruck. He had long hair for Rambo too, I think it was. He was a buffed, a little shorter than I thought, but still buffed. <laughs> uh, but he, uh, I could tell, you know, we got along Im immediately. And um, he told me he had to gain like 10 pounds of muscle and I had to practice. You know, he gave me a, a monologue that I had to practice. And um, six months after that, I did a screen test at MGM. It was me and two Russian guys, two big guys who looked like me, but taller, bigger. The thing is, w in, the, in the screen test, they kind of did a Russian Mr. T. I will kill you. I will murder you. You know, uh, when I, I decided, uh, I decided to play it very internal, to just stand there and go, my name is Drago. You know, just very, very, very internal. And uh, the next day, Sly called me, and, and I had the role. Um, and training, yeah, we trained together, Stallone and I, for six months, uh, six days a week, twice a day. Uh, weights in the morning for an hour and a half, and then boxing in the afternoon, about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, and I was in great shape before it started, because I was a European karate champion, then I had trained for the movie, then I trained another six months with Sly. So by the end of that, we were in such good shape. Like Sly said, you'll never be able to get out of shape. So um, uh, he was right. And then for Masters, I did more weights and I put on more, more uh, muscle because I wasn't boxing. You know, I was doing some sword fighting, but I wasn't in the ring two hours a day. But it was, it was all, these were all great experiences for a Swedish kid who came over to study engineering, chemical engineering in America. And I, Something else happened. I got sidetracked. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Dolph. Uh, so Universal Soldier, Jean-Claude Van Damme got the best of you. 20 years later, Expendables 2. How was it getting revenge on Jean-Claude Van Damme? Oh. And I have one other thing to say to you. I must break you. <laughs> okay, Jean-Claude who? No. Um, uh, just kidding. Just kidding. He's a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> I got, um, yeah, we took revenge. It was, uh, Stallone was the one who, you know, I think he cut his head off, didn't he? You know, this is gruesome. But, um, no, we had a good time together, actually, on Universal Soldier, and and we've been friendly for, for a long time. Um, actually, I saw him at a Comic-Con in, uh, where was that, in England, uh, last year, uh, end of last year, and... Um, uh, they're doing a documentary on my life, actually. Um, I've been shooting for almost two years now, and he's did a, he did, just did an interview for it in L.A. So, he, you know, we're still friends. Um, but it was nice that he, I got a revenge. It was good. I had to do it. Um, uh, yeah, so um, anyway, hopefully maybe I could do another film with him. I mean, he's, he's, a, very, he's a very fun guy and um, very charismatic. Nice guy. Good kicks. Weak hands, but good kicks. Just kidding. Um, I have a question. Um, in Rocky IV, did you actually go to Russia for the thing, or did you like just go to like Alaska or something? Oh, okay, good question. Okay, Rocky IV was shot in 1985. There was something called the Cold War in those days, meaning the American and Russia had all these nuclear weapons aimed at each other, and it, it was, we forget, now it's getting a little bit scary because of the Ukrainian war, but it was very scary. You could not go to the Soviet Union. You were not allowed to go. You certainly couldn't film there. So we shot some of it in Wyoming, uh, the Rocky uh, training montage. Um, and we shot the fight in Vancouver, Canada. And in those days, there was no visual effects, so we had 5,000 extras dressed as Russians. <laughs> Pretty impressive. So I remember coming in the first day in the ring, and there was, like, guys in uniforms, and, uh, you know, it was really realistic. You know, all the signs were in Russian. Instead of saying exit in uh, English, it said it in Russian. So, uh, but, um, but you know what? And then when we did publicity for the movie, I went to Berlin, 
And Berlin in those days was divided, East and West Berlin, East Berlin where, where their Soviets were. And I ran right along the wall, the Berlin Wall, and I could see the guards checking me out from the East German side, you know, because they'd probably heard of the movie too. So it was kind of interesting, interesting times. Thanks. Hello there, and good, uh, good morning, I should say. I have a couple of questions. The yes. first one is about Swedish food. Have you ever eaten Suströmming before? Unfortunately, I did, yes, a few times. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. If you open the can indoors, you have to repaint your house. <laughs> it's pretty nasty stuff. I don't know how people could live off that and back in 100 years ago. Because believe it or not, I have a friend from Sweden named Luve Melander, and he taught me how to eat it correctly. The second question that I have for you, yes. oh, if, if you needed to say anything, I'm sorry if I interrupted. No problem, no. I was going to say eat it on crisp bread with, uh, yeah, salt, pepper, and something else, right? The second question I have is, for those of you who don't know, this guy voiced vengeance in Minions, The Rise of Gru, and Dolph. The question I have for you is, when you were behind the mic, how did you create the voice? Um, yeah, good idea. Yeah, it's vengeance. Yeah, he it's, he's kind of has this Swedish accent, but he's very loud. <laughs> Everything is, and I didn't, want, didn't sound like Arnold, you know. <laughs> Governor of California, I had to not do that. <laughs> it's like a Swedish thing. It's kind of up and down without sounding too Austrian. So it was, it was uh, yeah, I was hoarse for two weeks afterwards. I know that. Is that how you created the voice? You took inspiration from Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, well, sort of, when I, but I couldn't sound like him. So I started there, and then it became more Swedish from that, you know. But it's very loud, everything he says. This is the most quiet he can speak. Yeah. Having been the first person to portray the Punisher on screen, do you have any thoughts or feelings about the people who Thanks. performed it after you? Um, you know, I must admit, I haven't seen the other movies. Not because I didn't want to, I just haven't had a chance. And I, I hear they're very good. And I, I think the series, somebody told me, is very good. I, I, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to do the first uh, Punisher, and I, I had a good time uh, playing the character, you know. Thanks. Another question here. Hey, uh, I have a question about uh, your education background. So you, you went into chemical engineering, but then going into acting is obviously a huge switch. What was it that, that kind of flipped that for you? And do you ever find yourself still tapping into any of that knowledge? <laughs> I wish. Um, you know, I, I studied engineering because my dad was an engineer, and my older brother's an engineer, and my other brother's an engineer. And I wanted to kind of impress my dad, I think, and I, his favorite school was MIT in Boston, and I got into MIT finally on a scholarship. But, you know, in my heart, I never really wanted to be an engineer. I was more adventurous, and I'd been in act, kind of acting when I was a kid, and painting and playing music, and I, I, was, I was more of a frustrated artist, you know, and that's, you know, I was, uh, fortunately for me, I, I decided to go that way even though I had to give up a lot, a lot of um, opportunities in school. So I, once I had my master's, I gave that up. And um, I was about 26 and got into acting. Um, you know, chemical engineering, I mean, I, you, you kind of use multitasking when I'm directing. I use multitasking, and I mix a very good drink, actually. I'm very good at <laughs> mixed drinks. That's as close as I get to chemical engineering. Yeah, Manhattan, you know, vodka tonic. Mr. Lundgren, thank you for being here. Um, you portrayed uh, the lead character in three of my, the greatest movies of my childhood, Masters of the Universe, The Punisher, and Showdown in Little Tokyo. Um, thank you. Uh, I just, the thank question you. I have would be, do you have any standout memories from filming The Punisher or Showdown in Little Tokyo? Uh, I think The Punisher, um, well, the thing is, this is before visual effects, and I did all my own fights. I was a karate champion, and this was a chance for me to get back. The writer, Robert Kamen, he also wrote The Karate Kid, and he wrote a few other movies. He was very much into martial arts, so they'd flown these two Japanese guys in to play the bad guys. But they weren't actors, they were real fighters. And I met them 
at the studio in, in Australia we shot in, in Sydney, and they thought they were going to have a real fight with me. They'd come in to fight me for real, you know. So it was a, they were a little confused when um, they realized there was a movie fight, especially when they found out they're both going to die at the end. <laughs> One was in tears. He, was, he couldn't go home and face his family because he had... You know, he died, he'd lost the fight. So they had to f force him to, you know, to actually die on screen. Uh, those guys, they were pretty tough. There was one, there's one scene when, um, uh, I think I, I have, we're fighting with weapons and I have a spear and I miss him with a spear and then he breaks it with a roundhouse kick. And, uh, you know, th they did enough takes and, uh, the stunt spears were gone. There's like four or five of them, and the stunt guy had screwed it up. So the real Japanese guy showed up. It was a real spear, and he just broke it with a kick. And I went, uh-oh, okay. <laughs> Lucky it's a movie. Uh, I think, what was the other one you said? Uh, Showdown. Obviously, the big, big thing in Showdown was working with, Jet, uh, with uh, Brandon Lee. You know, uh, I didn't, when I first met him, I... It didn't register Brandon Lee. I just thought he was this Asian, you know, fighter kid. <laughs> then I realized, oh, sh shoot, it's like Bruce Lee's son, you know. And that was, a, I was a big Bruce Lee fan when I was younger, so that was a big deal. That, and he was such a nice person, and he was a really good actor, you know, and I, it, it was really sad what happened. You know, he, he, he died, you know, in this, um, Accident you would stunt with uh, using um, blanks, you know, about th three years later. Um, he would have been a huge star, that kid. Um, so I think most of the memories from that movie is working with him, and uh, he has some very funny lines in the movie, and, and we have some good fights. It's a classic 80s movie, you know. Um, there's always the hot tub scene, there's the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You just had to do it, you know. <laughs> the body double shows up. It was it was funny. It was it was a cool movie, um, and um, yeah, what a nice what a nice man he was. Yeah, thank you. Just a quick follow up to that. Well, thank you, sir. Um, I want to say you made the most authentic and the greatest Marvel movie, no matter what anybody says. Not nothing against the other ones, but you did. The, the Punisher you made is phenomenal. You were the Punisher the entire movie. It was phenomenal. The question I had to follow up was you mentioned you did music. I'm just curious if you play an instrument and what that is. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I played the drums when I was younger. Yeah, I started with a trombone, but my lips got too swollen. I, I thought I had too, my lips were too big. I looked like Mick Jagger on steroids or something. <laughs> so I... Um, I, I switched to the drums, and I played the drums for about 10 years. Um, actually, I did a movie called uh, Command Performance. I directed a small movie where I played drummer, which was a lot of fun. All right. Hello, Dolph. Pleasure to meet you today. Thanks, man. A uh, couple things. First of all, I uh, appreciate you doing Creed Two. And if I'm right, I think that released on the anniversary of when the first one released in 85, because when did Creed Two release? 2015? Uh, yeah, it was... Well, they're usually released the same time of the year as well, which is around Thanksgiving, uh, yeah, November, because, end of November. Yeah, because I did see it on Thanksgiving Eve, both movies. That's what was unique about it. So it was yeah, like you're right. living that, it all over again. And, of course, the people playing in the theater. Question is on Rocky IV, when, of course, you had the fight scene with Carl Weathers and, of course, with uh, Sylvester Stallone. How many accidental punches may have been landed and if so what was the reaction because you know i talked to who was it uh, burt ward one time when you know from batman and robin when he had the famous scene with uh bruce lee you know cato and i asked you know did anyone accidentally land any punches and did anyone get hurt or just sort of stunned when it happened uh yeah there were a few accidental punches um it's mostly with stallone actually because our fight's 15 rounds you know and he very much, because he was a director and star and producer, and he's in the ring with me, you know. And I was, I was a karate champion, and, I, and he was 10 years older than me, but he kept up with me very well, and I, I was pretty impressed. And he had me do this stuff, like, he would just, as you're, you know, the camera's rolling, he would like, hit me harder, <laughs> like, <laughs> left hook. You know, like, okay. You know, he would just tell me what to do as we're going along, and... Uh, there are a couple of things, uh, scenes when I throw him against the ropes, 
and he goes flying, and that's all real. I mean, I, I realize now that I was a very strong young man, you know, in those days, and I, I wasn't really aware of my strength to some degree, you know, and um, I mean, I got tagged a few times. I didn't really care. I was used to getting hit. I, I was very afraid of hitting him because he was the star and he was my boss and everything. And, but he, he wanted me to hit him a few times. Um, there was a thing where I, you know, he got a couple of shots to the ribs, I think, and to the, well, he said the heart, his heart got damaged. He was in the hospital for a few weeks, unfortunately. And I think they blamed me. I thought it was an insurance scam. I don't know, but... Uh, and then, you know, we, obviously we have the famous, in those days, there was no uh, visual effects. And, and so you have those famous slow-mo shots when you get hit and the water comes out of your mouth. Well, the way to do it was, you know, they locked off the camera. They, it was 120 frames, so they have to pump it up with a lot of light. And then you put the blood in the mouth, fake blood and water in your mouth, and then I would just stand there and slide with just stiff arm, boom, hit me in the head. She'd go flying, and I would do it to him. And then he would just say, take it, Tyler, and all, and go home, you know. So <laughs> got the day off. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, so uh, Carl Weather said if he can come back from the dead, he'd like a rematch. I saw him in Cleveland last week, and I told him, and I remember you saying, or him, you saying on one of your GalaxyCon uh, virtual things that, Carl Weathers was pretty intimidated when he first met you because I don't think he realized the size of you and who you were when you went to film that. Yeah, you're right. Now, Stallone and I had been training for six months. We know each other, and he knew I was a gentle giant, you know, big guy who obviously, you know, had good intentions. But I think Carl, he, you know, we were in Vegas, and he showed up straight to Vegas. We hadn't rehearsed much. I think we rehearsed like one day or something, two days. It's only a one and a half round fight, you know. And I think when I walked into the ring and I was in character, I, I would stay in character, come in, you know, didn't make any, no emotion. And he just looked at me going, uh-oh, you know. <laughs> I know, I'm in, for, I'm in for, for some pain here. So um, I think some of those scenes where he backpedals and he's looking a little bit scared, I, I think it was pretty real, you know. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. Um, so I have a zillion questions I could ask you about like boxing and fighting and training. But what I'm going to ask you is exactly how did you end up in Johnny Mnemonic? Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, Johnny Mnemonic was an interesting movie. It was based on a novel. Um, I'm trying to remember the writer now, but he wrote a lot of, um, a lot of science fiction. And the director was his New York artist, Robert Longo. And um, yeah, I think I met him in New York, and they wanted me to—they wanted me for this crazy, this interesting character who was like a street preacher. He was like, a, I don't know, something from the book. And it was me and uh, Keanu Reeves. And um, I think, yeah, I think I just came in, met with Robert, and I had some ideas about the character having long blonde hair and being, you know, sort of like a. a, a kind of evangelic sort of, um, you know, action guy. It was, it was a little, you know, it was, it was an interesting character, kind of weird. And I remember Keanu was funny, because Keanu now is doing all these great movies, you know, John Wick, and he hadn't had one movie fight when I met him. He didn't know how to throw a punch. It was so funny, you know, I had to show him, because we have a fight in the movie. Um, but I think, you know, it was a good experience, and I... I remember the character looked so different than me because I had a, I had long hair and I had beard and and like wore these robes and I, I my agent at the time came to Toronto to see me and it was a, a night shoot and I was walking along and I saw him come he walked straight past me you know didn't recognize me where's Dolph you know here's I'm Dolph's agent and like hey David I'm here it's me he's like what so that's how different I looked thank you. Excellent. We have time for some more questions, so if you'd like to head over there. I do have a question for you, uh, Dolph, right over yeah. here. Hey, how are you? Uh, good. I remember you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah we go way back. Um, so you played another Russian villain on Arrow. 
Um, what, what kind of experiences do you have on there, and did you do a lot of your own fights? Uh, yeah, I did most of my own fights in that one. Um, yeah, Konstantin Kovar, wasn't it the guy's name? Yeah, it was fun. I hadn't done a Russian villain for a long time. Even the Rocky, I mean, the Drago thing kind of hangs over me a little bit. So people always think, oh, you play a lot of Russians. But I haven't really played that many Russians. I have done, I did Red Scorpion, which was a Russian. I did Drago. Uh, and then I'd done Creed Two. of course. That was only a couple of years ago. No, but I did that in 2016, I think it was. Um, it was fun. It was playing this sort of uh, colorful Russian gangster, and I kind of, I, I kind of got a little inspired by um, The Godfather, because it was a, he was a bit like a Russian uh, Corleone, you know. He was the Russian uh, Godfather, so he had a bit, a bit of that kind of whisper. But I had now I can't really do it, but I have to do it. I had to go from. Uh, Michael, you spend time with your family? You had to go from that, you know? A man that doesn't spend time with his family is not a man. I had to go from that to uh, the Russian version, you know, and I kind of did that a little bit, you know? So it's kind of very kind of soft-spoken, but dangerous, you know, like most of the Russians. You know, they will poison you and kill you. Uh, anyway, uh, so, um, yeah, it was fun. It was a fun role. A couple more questions awesome. over to the side here. Hi. Um, I have two questions, if that's okay. Yeah, um, sure. First one, uh, I'm a trombone player myself, and I'm in marching band. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I was wondering if you were in band in high school, like jazz band, marching band, concert band. Um, and the second question was, what did you st uh, you were talking about being a chemi uh, chemical engineer and holding a PhD, and I was wondering what you were studying um, and, you know, what you learned. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I did play in, um, so we're like twins, you and I. I played in a marching band, uh, I played in a concert band, uh, drums, in school, in high school, uh, which was great, because we would travel around, you know, to different um, marching band fests or, you know, uh, rallies, and, and it was great. Um, and I studied chemical engineering um, when I was <clears throat> in, in uh, college in Sweden. And then I went to Australia on a scholarship. Um, and uh, um, I was um, uh, specializing in petroleum engineering. My dad was, I mean, my brother was a petroleum engineer. And he had a company actually in Houston, oil exploration company. And I was going to work for him. But I never got there. I never got that far. But I, I focused on petroleum engineering. Um, and uh, then, yeah, and then I was going to go to MIT. So I had a scholarship there, a full batch scholarship. But I, I was there for a few weeks. And then I decided to, you know, become a, a, a starving actor in New York instead. My dad didn't get it. But, you know, he did after a while, after about a year. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. Um, some people here have talked about their dealings with mental health and stuff. I wanted to ask you about your TED Talks, which if you guys haven't seen it, it's amazing. And it also talks about a lot of his life. Um, how did that TED Talks come about? Okay. Uh, thank you. Actually, speaking of Fulbright scholarships, I, there was a TEDx Fulbright um, talk in Los Angeles about seven years ago. And they approached me and... Um, and I, you know, had different topics. I wanted to talk about, first I wanted to talk about growing up in Sweden and my life before Rocky IV, because people have seen me after Rocky IV, but I wanted to talk about, you know, who I was before that. And I had, you know, they assign a coach to you for TED Talks, because it's very specific, it has to be no more like 21 minutes, and you can't have any notes, and you stand on stage, and, you, and it's being filmed, and it's quite, quite challenging. And... He and I started talking about my dad, and I had a very complex relationship with my my dad. He was a he was a very smart man. He was successful, but he was kind of violent, you know, towards me and my mom. And um, uh, a lot of what I've accomplished later in life uh, was because of what I suffered, you know, his his beatings and and his kind of harshness that I 
how I grew up, and I, that's why I became a fighter, that's why I um, later did a lot of therapy, that's why I obviously became an actor, to try to express that, we, that trauma I had. And my TED talk was about uh, my experience as a, as a young, I was very young when it first happened, maybe like three, four years old, and then um, how that influenced my life, and how later I, I've been involved in charities um, for human trafficking and also against abused children. So I'm trying to give back, you know, trying to, I've, you know, trying to give back to other people. So there you go. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, Thank you. During the Expendables, um, who of all the action stars there that were there, who was the most serious to work with and who kept you also laughing the most? Serious. Um, well, let's see. Jason Statham is pretty, he's kind of serious about his, his work. Um, and, um, you know, he's kind of taken over now as sort of the lead, I would say, of, in the new Expendables. And Expendables 4, Sly is stepping back a bit. Um, I thought, I mean, I, personally, I like Stallone. He's funny. He's a crazy Italian, you know. He's a little bit over the top in many ways, you know, but, but a genius in many ways, and also very funny. So um, um, I think I enjoy being with him on set, and he, he is certainly a funny guy. And he wrote, uh, you know, in the first script, when I got it, this is back in uh, about 15 years ago, uh, I read about page four, it said, Gunnar Jensen. Drunk Swede with a big knife. And I was like, okay, I think I know. Probably, I know who can play that guy. Uh, and uh, the, and I read the script, and it was all full of Stallone's jokes, you know. And he has this kind of black sense of humor. It's like when in the first movie when I fired his warning warning shot and at the terrorist, and just his boots are left smoking, you know. <laughs> warning shot. <laughs> So um, that's kind of how he rolls, which I, I appreciate that, and I have a good time with him. Thanks. Looks like we have time for about two more questions. And sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Longburn. It's an honor to talk to you today. Um, I was wondering, uh, how did you stumble upon acting, and, uh, or directing, rather? Because I love every movie you've directed. It's always a hit for me. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I directed a couple of movies back uh, about um, starting almost 20 years ago, you know, and um, then I started by a year, uh, two years, three years ago, I did a film, uh, and now I just have a new movie called Wanted Man that I directed. It's a thriller, kind of set, about, uh, set on the border to Mexico with cartels and things like that. Um, yeah, I, you know, when I was a kid, I used to force my siblings to play all these war games as a director and they they were scared of me so they you know they had to march back and forth in the yard and so forth and i think that directorial vein started then that i just like to um express myself and try to take the audience on a ride i appreciate that you know as, a, as an actor you do it too but you know it's really a director's medium film if you're on stage as a theater actor it's the actress medium. I'm up here, and the director is down with you guys. He can't do anything. Once his play starts, it starts. But in, in, in film, the director decides the take they're going to use, how to edit it, what kind of music to put on, and so forth. And I, it's, it's stimulating to me to do that, because I've, I've um, acted in so many movies, like 80, 90 movies already. But directing is kind of fresh to me, and I appreciate you said that. Um, yeah, so I have... Uh, a film coming out later this year, uh, a thriller that I've just finished, and um, I'm working on another movie, uh, kind of a dark comedy to shoot that in L.A. sometime, maybe later this year, early next year. Thank you. All right, this will be our last question. If you didn't have a chance to ask a question here, please visit him at, at his table. But go right ahead. Hi there. Uh, so uh, two questions really quick. Uh, have you ever had any experience with going to Drum Corps International? And then the second question, uh, with, with your character in Creed 2, there was a lot of growth. Uh, did you have any influence on the, the shape of that, the character development in Creed 2? Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, Drum Corps. No, I, I stopped 
doing the drumming when I was in my teens. You know, I never got into that, but I, I did travel, as I said before, as part of the marching band. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I, I used to have a drum kit at home, and I gave it away to somebody, to a church, actually, because they needed it more than me. I was just making noise, you know. So, But I'm going to buy a new one um, soon and, and try to... It's very therapeutic. Um, Creed two, Yeah, you know, I, did, I was very kind of reluctant to do that picture because um, I didn't want to screw up the legacy of that character of Ivan Drago, which is kind of become a bit of a iconic character in, for some reason film in the f film history a little bit and um, um, but I, I when I read the script um, it, it was very interesting the character had, had a really cool arc you know trying to take revenge through his son and then he realizes l very late in the in the film that it's like I was working on the character with with an acting coach you know and and we were saying like the last guy in the world who's going to throw in the towel is Ivan Drago. Never. So when I read at the end of that script that he throws in the towel to save his son, I thought it was beautiful. And it just gave the character that arc and that kind of redemption that, uh, he, you know, I think he, he deserved after 40 years. <laughs> so that's why I enjoyed playing it. Thank you. Awesome. Dolph, thank you so much for uh, spending the time with us. Um, please visit him at his table, get some autographs, get some selfies. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> Big round of applause. Thanks, Pittsburgh. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. This is Captain Zap Brannigan, and I prefer to call myself Admiral Zap Brannigan. I'd like to draw your attention to that sexy subscribe button, those curves, that triangle. Like Leela's eye. Click it. Ah, that was great. Follow fun and have fandom and yabbo.